Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Buddy Sola. I am the community manager for Akupara Games, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Akupara Games podcast, the Akupara podcast. Today, I am joined by my illustrious guest. Hey, guys. My name is Alex. Uh, I'm from Wargaming, uh, from the internal agency of Wargaming, and from internal CGI studio called PlaySense. Nice to hear you. I'm so glad that you're here, Alex. Um, so by this point, you have seen the just, God, just the jaw-dropping trailer that was animated by uh, PlaySense for our upcoming release of Grime, right? Grime is going to be releasing next week. And um, and we've worked closely with the Wargaming guys to make a just insanely cool, like, cinematic action trailer that really captures the, the, the feel of what Grime is meant to play like as a video game. Um, so, I figured that it would be a pretty cool opportunity uh, to hang out a little bit with Alex on the podcast and talk a bit about how that trailer gets made right like that's something that we're always really interested in doing kind of peeling back the the layers of video game production to sort of see how thing how how things work right how the gears turn okay so alex it's the first time you have ever seen or heard of grime what made you see this project and think wow i want to make a trailer for this uh actually i will go uh, a bit earlier a uh, couple of months before we just uh, get acquainted with Grime, we just were launching, preparing the launching campaign for the PlaySense studio as an internal studio for external okay, clients in, cool. in Wargaming. Uh, and we decided just maybe we should go uh, somehow non-conventionally, not just simply pour money into promo ads, uh, but like work with the law of energy conservation. So uh, we are like part of the game industry and we really care about the growth and development. So we just, we decided to uh, do something good for it. So being mm. a startup 20 years ago, we do understand how it's difficult for an indie product to just break through and achieve something. And we decided to pick a project uh, interesting for us, uh, which would help us to develop our main USB at the studio, the storytelling actually and uh, make a free CGI trailer for them. So uh, we just went through the several hundreds of different games uh, on various platforms. Uh, we pick uh, a couple of uh, wow. games, talk to the teams, and when the first time we saw Grime, it was like, wow. It's kind of super cool, amazing, surrealistic world. We just really do care about the uh, mo modern period of uh, art uh, history. And uh, this mm -hmm. surrealistic world, crazy characters and these combats, it was super awesome. And we saw a super cool potential behind those materials we found that you've posted before, like the uh, intro trailer, kind of a, uh, maybe sh sh uh, short gameplay uh, shots. Everything was super cool and we decided to go with, uh, with Grant. That, that, well, that I'm part. very glad that you did because, <laughs> uh, you know, the trailer turned out really great, obviously. Um, that's that's really interesting. I, I do think that that is, um, I don't know, that's something that's just really cool to hear, right? Like, one of the things that we care about a lot, we call ourselves like an indie for indies, right? Where, you know, we want to help out um, and we want to sort of uplift the, the scene of indie games. So I feel like I, I'm very much with you on mm -hmm. that sort of desire to help out other indie games, uh, you know, being successful because it is, it is really tough to break through, right? It's tough to find an audience sometimes and, um, having right, like a, you know, like this is the kind of trailer that I would expect to see before, like, you know, a triple A game comes <laughs> out. Right. Um, so so yeah yeah absolutely um so how much did you play around in development builds of grime to like to get ideas uh actually the creative team who was working uh on the creative concept uh we didn't have a lot of time to spend on playing but we were mostly like reading uh surrealistic manifestos uh looking uh, just for examples how we could do it uh like drawing writing stuff but our CGI guys play. They pretty. They pretty spend a lot of time mm -hmm. playing. Uh, we wish they 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 did less actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so you mentioned um, you know surrealistic manifestos as something that you were reading to get a good sense for Brian. What what's an example of one of those? Uh, it's actually the uh, original uh, manifesto of uh, surrealists. 
uh, those guys like Dali, uh, for sure. example, we really somehow find out that there are uh, things that uh, are very close to uh, our positioning as a play sense, uh, as we also have kind of a manifesto uh, and how we really feel this world, how we want to match it. Uh, and uh, maybe some kind of perception of uh, we were trying to uh, maybe somehow uh, go to your your heads mm. uh, and to understand how did you create this world? Uh, what drive you into doing this in creation uh, of uh, locations, of monsters, all this stuff? So we're trying to pick this uh, from, from, from somewhere from the space. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, I feel like the, that surrealistic nature that is the underlying kind of... Uh, I don't know, it's like the underlying aesthetic of Grime has pulled a lot of people into the game, right? From the very first trailers, people were really responding to, to you know, that kind of um, that kind of atmosphere. But let's talk about, you know, the trailer itself, right? So the very first image we see in the Wargaming trailer um, done by you guys, done by PlaySense, is Breath mm -hmm. Animating Stone. Why did you want to start on that image? Uh Actually, we wanted to somehow show the the way, the way this world was created. Mm. So as the bra the breast gave birth to it, so we just went from small things to bigger. Uh, we see the stone, then hands like growing up, the faces, and finally a claw hound, uh, like uh, first monster. Yeah. Uh, this is this probably is the main reason of setting up uh, the stage for 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 the next steps. Uh, that's why we just started from the brass as the main, the main uh, the main stuff of the game. Yeah, that makes sense. I get that for sure. You know, so for for the listeners at home, breath with like a capital B is like the animating yeah, force yeah. in grime, right? And it is something that um, that it infuses stone to create the enemies, the the good guys, the bad guys, right? Um, just moving parts of the, you know, moving parts of the scenery or the background, right? Like there's that image in the opening shot of the hands reaching up out of the, you know, out of the stone. Is that something that you settled on, you know, quickly? Did you like that image? Uh, yeah, and uh, we especially loved the, when we were talking with, uh, uh, with developers, uh, one of the game designers just said, guys, I'm super crazy about hands. Please add more hands. <laughs> And so <laughs> that's kind of a small forest of hands in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's like a big, I feel like that is a, um, I don't know, it's like a big motif in grime, right? You know, so not to skip ahead, but at the very, very end, you can also see that um, that the amalgam that comes out of the the stone head, he, his body is like supported by these, by these hands and arms, right? Um, so yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like that, that's, there's definitely, there's definitely something there to the, to the animated hands when it comes to, when it comes to grind, but I don't want to start with the amalgam. I want to start with the claw hound because that is like the first, you know, like it's the first enemy. It's kind of the first creature we see, right? Like we don't even see the, the, the hero or the protagonist of the trailer until after the kind of panning past the claw hound. Why'd you choose that enemy as the first kind of like beat um, for for the action and for you know introducing to the uh, to the, like the beings of the world of grime. Uh, actually, Glowhound is uh, it it looks absolutely awesome. It just melted our so uh, sorry the rest of the monster team, but uh, this is <laughs> the, 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 the n <laughs> number one for us. Uh, and this crazy mixture of a dog or and the snake or kind of an insect, mm -hmm. it's. It's really something new. It's a lot of surrealistic here. And actually, almost any monster is a super clever work of uh, the developing team. Uh, it's really awesome. But this one was the laugh at the first sight. When we, we just saw the number of monsters, we just said, this, this one will be the first in the trailer. <laughs> you know, honestly, that makes sense. I mean, so there's other stuff, there's other monsters in the trailer too, right? So there's the eye brute, who's yeah. kind of the bottom half of a jaw and holding his own sort of two eyes um, eyes up. And then obviously the the amalgam. Why did you choose to add those as the other enemies that get featured in the trailer? I don't know actually uh, how to respond. Probably it's again, it's about love, uh, the first sight. Uh, we probably would like to show as much as possible, but as we need to improve the model's quality mm -hmm. to show it more like on uh, cinematic stuff, uh, we don't have enough time to 
do all of that. Yeah. So we just pick probably the, I don't know, the craziest maybe, uh, but uh, which somehow resembles the uh, human bodies and the animal bodies, maybe something something like this. So that's why these two, uh, I mean, except of Amalgam uh, are in the trailer. Yeah, that definitely makes sense, especially because there's that moment in the trailer, you know, so the, the, the sort of first beat of action is the Clawhound attacks, and the hero absorbs the claw hound attack right um which is its own you know which is its own kind of like awesome moment but then things escalate from there right because he gets hit with the with the eye from the eye brute and then turns around to see a bunch of claw hounds right and and kind of the eye brute uh lingering behind and i just i i like that moment of escalation right where it's like okay one of these things was was very dangerous now we're gonna have to deal with a bunch of them and that escalation causes him to pull out uh the the mall axe anyway there's a couple of core shots that are like that that speak to things that you know w players will do in game right absorbing enemies using breath mm -hmm. to reform yourself attacking with weapons right cracking open the stone head with the amalgam all that stuff is in the game why did you choose to highlight those aspects of the game in kind of the cinematic form all uh, right yeah some of the actions we decided to show together with the claw bite team like just in order to give the viewer closer to real gameplay mm -hmm. that they will see in the game and also to match with other assets you guys were creating uh, but some of them, like Moment with the Head, for example, uh, in the end of the trailer, uh, was just a very beautiful artistic move, again, to make it look more cinema-like. Uh, but mostly the idea was just to get closer to real gameplay, not to frustrate people, uh, like showing this emotion you are talking about, like, oh, it's a super hot AAA trailer for AAA project but get closer to the real game yeah sure that's definitely a frustration that right like that players have expressed sometimes where you know there, there are these beautiful cinematic trailers for a game that doesn't really match what happens inside of that game right it's mm -hmm. not an accurate representation um so i do think that it's very it's very cool to really focus on uh getting the specifics of gameplay down in the cinematic trailer did you have a good time working with the clover bite team in order to sort of understand the world that they made uh for the purposes of making the trailer yeah uh actually it, it's a super hot experience uh because we didn't ever work with the uh indie uh publisher or mm. developer or some like maybe let it be called uh small small teams we work with internal clients who have uh, a lot of money to spend and we just were like like uh uh i don't know uh, matching to their needs and here it was at the in the beginning it was very uncomfortable as we come and say that just guys uh we do understand that this is your baby uh and nobody probably will do like this but we want to yeah. do it not like we are people with money who want to spend money on creating something beautiful for you but we want to do something beautiful together with you uh, and a couple of times receiving the feedback uh, from from uh, Clover Bike guys, it was like uh, for that from their side. Like, was, uh, sorry, guys, we we, we can't make yeah. any any critics uh, on what you've done because it it's it's for free. <laughs> yeah, but uh, finally, we just uh, it was super super cool to to work with the guys to work with you. Uh, uh, for me, it was a pleasure, and uh, somehow we somehow feel. Uh, being an indie uh, small team, uh, like a startup, uh, and work, working together, creating something beautiful, not for like forgetting about money, marketing purposes, and all this stuff. Just make 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 beautiful things to uh, show it to beautiful yeah, people. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And obviously, you know, like the trailer is beautiful. One of the things that I like a lot about sort of that. Um, you know, there, there's that moment where, you know, like the music kicks in and the the Molax comes out and the hero is really, you know, kind of cleaving through these different enemies. Um, one of the big features, I feel like, of the Wargaming trailer was that it used motion capture. Is that right? Yeah, it was motion capture. We also use a different pipeline for the CGI team. We used uh, uh, cloud rendering for, for some of the wow. shots. So... For us, it was a lot of exper experimenting uh, over there. Yeah, uh, 
and also for the storytelling part, uh, as you could go through this story uh, and you can see uh, in the beginning uh, what was difficult and what was interesting and challenging, we just went uh, for the like simple uh, road. Uh, mm -hmm. We've tried to ask like Shakespeare question uh, for, for the hero. Uh, who is he? What is he doing there? What's his reason to be there? And uh, uh, what will he do with this world? Uh, but yeah, uh, talking with the guys, we were not allowed to uh, reveal the whole lore of the game yeah. uh, as it's surprise for, for the player. So it was the one restriction. And one more thing, uh, actually the hero doesn't show uh, a real reason to do something. So his actions are emotional so he's just killing for, for no non, non purpose uh, thing like he's killing for killing and it was challenging and we wanted to show the birth of the hero you can see this when he falls mm. down he's lying and his his first kill of a claw hound it's it's accidental kill so he's not trying to fight he's just he's just uh, trying to survive trying to right defend yeah himself. that makes that makes so much sense yeah. especially because you know at first he doesn't even have a weapon right it's only when the enemies yeah. arrive and it, and and kind of the the stakes um you know increase and the and the and the tension escalates that he has to pull out the maul axe uh and uh and you know really kind of strike out right that's re that's really interesting especially because like you know the absorb mechanic which is in game where you know an enemy attacks you and rather than you know strike it back or whatever you actually just absorb mm -hmm. its being um because obviously the protagonist of grime has a black hole for a head and that's what black holes do right um i think that there is yeah. something that's really compelling about that sort of as a you know um to show the hero really starting from the bottom if that makes sense, right? You know, when he falls in the very beginning, mm -hmm. and 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 the uh, the animation focuses on his legs being kind of reformed. It's pretty clear that this is not a guy who is at the top of his game. If that makes sense. Yeah, sure. And then after killing the first enemy and uh, absorbing it, it, really feels its power. So it's he's beginning, uh, he's becoming bigger, stronger. Mm -hmm. He just pulled this uh, axe out. And just kick some ass. Yeah, I, I, a nice little detail about that is those tendrils, right? That kind of come out of the, uh, you know, like the shoulders uh, or whatever. I, mm -hmm. I thought that was so cool. Okay, so, um, but I am interested to hear, are there any enemies or weapons that you used in game that you wanted to feature, but ultimately kind of just like got left on the cutting room floor? You're like, ah, you know, I would love to do this thing or feature that thing, but there's just not room you know, in the trailer for something like this. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, as I've said before, we wanted to show as many monsters and uh, bosses as it as it was possible. But yeah, we were restricted in time. Uh, what concerns uh, weapon? We really wanted to even not diving deep into the game uh, mechanics and weapons. We just uh, cre created somehow in our heads that there is probably uh, like two blades uh, that the uh, hero uses somehow. And we wanted to create uh, in this final battle scene with three enemies this Prince of Persia killing uh, shot with two blades. Mm -hmm. uh, but later, just talking with the guys, we decided that it will be cooler if we show some morphing of the weapon. So when this axe is morphing from the stick, like actually from this beautiful axe. So that was a decision we've made. But yeah, uh, probably... Uh, more weapons could be shown, but we just we just picked this one. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I feel like the living weapon, right? Like, you know, whenever um, when I'm thinking about the game, when I'm thinking about uh, putting like something I've done is put together these like weapon showcases, right? The the fact that the weapons themselves are alive is its own kind of like cool little thing to discover, right? You know, when you're using the Molax normally. You might not necessarily see it, but then that special attack kind of brings these three claws out and they kind of, um, you know, extend and retract. And I feel like there's something to sort of, um, you know, they're, they're not characters, right? But they are alive, which I think is really interesting and neat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's not very common thing for, for weapons in the game just to be alive. Uh, and this, again, it's a kind of a reflection about surrealism and all this stuff. So beautifully done scene. Yeah, definitely. Um, something else that's interesting about the trailer is that it uses a couple of 
POV shots, right? There's one um, of mm-hmm. the hero sort of rushing forward, the claw hound also rushing forward, which is not something that we necessarily see a lot in, you know, in video game trailers, at least not video game trailers that aren't, you know, like a, like a first person trailer, right? Like, I guess maybe there are some Call of mm-hmm. Duty trailers that would have that kind of first person perspective. Um, but uh, why did you want to go with that kind of, uh, you know, camera style for... Uh, the 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 grime trailer. Yeah, uh, so this is actually not very uh, not 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 the stuff for like beauty shot. It uh, actually helped us a lot. Uh, it helped us twice to work uh, with the director and the 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 plot of the story. Mm. First time we use it as a tool of uh, personification of the viewer and the main character actually. So uh, when we fall down, uh, we super quickly met Amalgam as a main antagonist uh, who we see in the end. So we could, the player could, the viewer could associate himself with uh, this character, and he understand that he will be probably playing uh, this guy. Oh yeah. That and makes the sense. second time, yeah. And the second time, we wanted just to show this hunter victim thing uh, with a super quick twist when the victim suddenly becomes a real hunter. Uh, so and then absorbs this uh, this claw hound. So these two things uh, really helped. To, to make uh, a connection with the viewer uh, and to, to make this twist of the character. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense, especially because, you know, when I, when I think of other trailers, right, a lot of the times trailers will start right on the protagonist so that you know who you're, you know, like, you know immediately who to project on. But, like, as we discussed earlier, this trailer starts on the world. It starts on the breath animating stone. And the first character we see is the claw hound, right? It's not it's not the hero. So I definitely think that a moment like that is kind of necessary to sort of orient the viewer as to, like, okay, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? Who am I rooting for in all of this, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, when the hero rallies... Uh, kind of against the claw hounds and the eye brute there's uh that that's when like the music kicks into high gear high gear right there's this super sick Mm -hmm. you know guitar riff um and it just like really gets into like this high octane action i feel like how did you how did you look at music for the trailer how did that all come together oh it was actually a super tough thing uh we spent really a lot of time in searching for proper music so we went through the classic trailer fighting music. Then it was like kind of a mixture of something rock and dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tried to somehow uh, use your choral motifs from your in-game music. But uh, finally, we decided to go uh, again to the philosophy of the game, uh, taking this uh, breath as the main, uh, I don't know, philosophical theme. Yeah. And uh, we just go from this dark ambient uh, mixture uh, into guitar madness. So as the uh, breath going through music, it's becoming crazy and crazy and crazy. And then this super hot bit uh, of a guitar just to reflect the brass philosophy. That actually, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because, you know, it's almost like the music itself is kind of being, you know, like, I feel like one of the, one of the motifs in the trailer, right, is this thing of something being kind of uh like like dead or lifeless coming to life and like reanimating right you know like like that shot that i mentioned Mm -hmm. earlier about the hero's legs reforming after his fall and i feel like something very similar is mirrored in the music as it starts in kind of an ambient place where it's not you know it's it almost doesn't have things like the musical structure right of like melody Mm -hmm. and stuff like that it is just there for atmosphere mood and ambiance right um, and then over time it grows into that thing until it is just, here is a super sweet shredding guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we, we actually really tried to somehow, uh, put the music in the beginning, but it was so conflicting with the setting up the, uh, stage for this story so mm-hmm. we just uh, throw it away okay that's very cool um something else i'm interested in is like what's something in the trailer that we might have otherwise missed right like are there any secrets in the trailer that you want to say like hey by the way take a look at you know minute whatever second whatever there's a little shot here that's like cool and interesting what's something that you would want to point out to you know the listeners at home um, that they might have missed about the trailer. Uh, yeah, there are several, uh, not not Easter eggs, but moments that could be 
uh, could, could uh, people could throw attention to. Uh, the first, uh, it's actually the moment Amalgam is catching uh, the hero first time. And uh, the hero, we don't know, uh, and he don't he doesn't know who is he. Mm -hmm. But we can see the small, very small, very light reflection uh, of his uh, dark dark hole in the eye of Amalgam. Uh, this is one moment. Uh, then the hero uh, it, himself, uh, for our CGI team working with such uh, uh, thing as su such substance uh, as uh, dark hole was a new stuff actually, and it was a lot of R and D how to show it correctly, how to make it work uh, as not a simple uh, VFX, but kind of a, I don't know a real object that really uh, works in the in the uh, in the scene uh, and uh, and the story probably it's a a, a question uh, to the listeners to the viewers uh, how story works for them actually oh. because it was a challenge uh, and it, it's it will be cool to hear some feedback uh, is it clear is it maybe not very hot or maybe very simple story to tell uh, any suggestions will be super cool for us to hear that that is really interesting yeah i love that moment where you know it's it's foreshadowing right where the hero kind of smacks into the amalgam and then the amalgam's eye you know, and I remember, you know, there was a bunch of back and forth about the about the eye, and we settled on this image of the eye having kind of, um, you know, like a like a milky goo, you know, that's not incredibly reflective um, on it, which I thought was 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 kind of neat and unique about seeing the amalgam for the first time is that it's kind of blind. Mm -hmm. uh, which just, I don't know, I, I, there's something about that that I thought was like really like iconic. It looks really good. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, that's about all the time that we have for recording today. Uh, to the listeners, uh, what was your favorite moment of the trailer? Uh, what are the things that, that really popped off screen for you that made you go, wow? Um, we would love to hear any and all comments um, and, uh, and just what you thought about, about this, you know, this kind of, uniquely animated 3d trailer for for a game like grind this is this is an amazing opportunity alex i am so glad that we were able to work together to put something like this together because i feel like it is just so rare in um you know in indie games to to have something of that sort of like cinematic quality uh show up for for a trailer thanks buddy thanks for invitation uh thank you listeners uh play grime uh leave your feedback uh it was a pleasure to work with you and to talk to you it was also a pleasure to work and talk with you uh grime will be coming out uh next week on monday august 2nd you will be able to play against the claw hounds and i brute and fight the amalgam uh for yourself we also have a demo that will be live honestly the demo from a couple of weeks ago was so popular um and folks were so excited about playing that that we've actually decided to set it live so it is live now today you can go play it uh for the last week in july until grime goes live next week um as always you can find us at twitter.com slash akupara games discord.gg slash akupara games um and you know here at the akupara games youtube channel thank you all for tuning in and have a great day